In the last video, we arrived at an expression for the probability of transition due to a particular mode of thermal radiation with angular frequency omega j and polarization or direction of the electric field n hat j, uh, which is given by the following expression. Now, we uh, to consider the spectrum of thermal radiation, which is a range of frequencies over which uh, thermal radiation is emitted, as well as all possible directions of uh, n hat j, or all polarizations. Uh, we're going to add up all of these probabilities and take an average over the possible directions so that our net probability of transition will be the sum over all of the angular frequencies in our spectrum. Each probability for a particular angular frequency is given by our expression up here. Since the spectrum is uh, a continuous quantity, uh, this sum will actually transform to uh, an integral over uh, all of the frequencies and I'll denote that by delta omega. Okay, so this will be equal to, uh, we can take out the constants integral. Uh, we're going to need to average over all polarizations. So average over all directions of nj. We had the energy density per unit frequency. along with these terms. Sorry, there's no J anymore because it's a continuous variable now. Over, uh, integrated over a range of frequencies. So we'll begin by uh, this term over here. Uh, we won't go through the details, uh, but you can show that the average of this quantity over all directions is just equal to one third DFI squared. This three, you can think of it as coming from the fact that uh, only um, only three of the components of the direction will play a role, and then you average over the three of them. So that our net probability can be rewritten like so. Energy density per unit frequency. Uh, one half sine square of omega fi minus omega t. Omega fi minus omega square integrated with respect to omega. To evaluate this integral, we're going to use a similar argument to uh, how we derive Fermi's golden rule. So just like in our derivation for Fermi's golden rule, 
uh, this sinc term, the sine square over omega fi minus omega squared. For this to have any appreciable non-zero contribution, we only have to consider the very narrow uh, range about the resonance frequency between the two states, omega fi. Uh, this means that over this range for which the sinc term is non-zero, we can take the energy density to be about constant and equal to the value of the energy density at the resonance frequency. This is constant, which means that we can take it out of the integral. This should be approximately equal to u omega fi. Likewise, because the sinc function is so narrow, we can extend our limits of integration to plus or minus infinity without making much of an error because uh, for most of this range, the sinc function doesn't contribute anything. And this integral evaluates to pi t over two. So that our final expression for the probability of transition is equal to two, so not h squared. energy density times pi t over two. Okay. We can simplify this a little bit further. And what's nice about this is that it's linear in time, which tells us that this quantity over here has to be a rate of transition. So a rate of transition being the probability of transition per unit time. We'll call that RIF. This is, you can think of it as the derivative of the probability of transition as a function of time. This is pi three epsilon naught h squared. You make up fi. And this is importantly uh, per atom. Okay, and this is uh, a special case of Fermi's golden rule where it depends on the square modulus of the matrix element. So this quantity over here was the matrix element of the dipole moment operator between our initial and final state.
Great. So to summarize, uh, we starting from the probability of transition for a generic uh, harmonic perturbation to a quantum system. We specialized our discussion to the case of thermal radiation, which is in general not monochromatic and non, not polarized or randomly polarized, for which we had originally identified two processes, absorption and stimulated emission, uh, for which we found that the rates were equal to one another. In the case of thermal radiation, we have arrived at an expression for the rate of transition per atom that depends on the square modulus of the dipole moment operator and the energy density, or this is like a proxy for the density of photons in a radiation field. There is, however, one process that uh, we missed in our treatment, and that's the process of spontaneous emission, which uh, it, we can derive it from uh, a more specialized treatment by quantizing the electromagnetic field. Instead of doing that, we can actually arrive at the process of spontaneous emission by mimicking Einstein's treatment of the same problem, uh, which we'll start doing in the next video.